real talk. We're about two weeks into van life now, and I can tell you for sure that van life sucks. We're Steven and Andy, caffeinated travel couple on a mission to see all 50 states. We recently started van life with a visit to Washington, D.C. Now this week we head to Pennsylvania, where our commitment to this new lifestyle is really put to the test. This sucks. What if we had connected it backwards? We don't know how we're gonna fix this. When it rains, it pours, man. So yeah, there's some water running down back here. I hope this isn't an indicator of what life is really gonna be like with this thing. Join us on our epic road trip to see the U.S. in our camper van ace. Let's, Let's go! go. If you've been following along, you know that we headed out without our electrical system installed because we were doing the rest of the build while we had an electrician build the electrical system for us. Today's the day, that's our electrical system and we are having it installed by this man right here. What's up, Evan? And Rachel. And Rachel, Appalachian vans in the house. We got the electrical system installed and we thought, Boom, boom, done. We're just gonna head out from here and it's gonna be smooth sailing for the next five months. That is not at all the way it went down. <laughs> Don't mind the hole in the wall. We had some issues, but we'll fix that later. Ready, babe? Yep. We have bubbling. I don't know what that means. Is it supposed to do that? I don't know. It sounds like an aquarium in the tank, though. Okay, but it's staying in the tank? Uh, yeah, so far. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna try putting the water on. Okay. Nothing happening here yet. Maybe it needs time to work its way through the system. Maybe it's going the wrong way. What if we did it backwards? Could that be why we're getting bubbles? Yeah. When you're putting things like wiring in for lights, for chargers, all kinds of stuff, it's really helpful to have the batteries already set up so that you can test your wiring, make sure you did it right. I, of course, did not. <laughs> I got a lot of it right, but I got some things wrong as well. So we had to go back, we had to fix some things, we had to pull something out of the wall. We've got a bit of a hole in the wall situation right now. One of the things that I did not wire correctly was our water pump. It took us a little while, but we finally got our water going. We got all the lights on. Everything seems like it's gonna be great, right? But no, not exactly. Van life day number nine. I'm laying on the floor of the van trying to stay cool because we can't drive anywhere right now. We bought a vehicle that was low mileage, extremely well maintained, not terribly old, so that we thought, okay, it won't give us too many problems, if any. Right after we pick up our van from getting the electrical installed, our air conditioning stops blowing cold. <laughs> it's only the hottest summer on record in pretty much the entire world. So that's gonna be a bummer having to go without air conditioning. We make an appointment to have it looked at the next morning. We get to our park up for the night and wouldn't you know it, as we're idling, suddenly the car starts making horrible noises. We're just gonna go to Maryland today, get some Maryland style crab, maybe chill on the beach a bit. We're back to problem solving. I don't mind so much the little bits we have to do in the van to fix what we've already broken. No uh, confession for me, but it's this engine stuff all of a sudden on top of everything else. I just feel like when it rains, it pours, man. You know, we just put so much money into building this thing. So the fact that we're finally just getting on the road and all of a sudden this goes down, it's really disappointing. Um, I hope this isn't an indicator of what life is really gonna be like with this thing. We had to go to seven mechanics in six days because we were being cheap and trying not to go to Mercedes. We thought they're gonna charge us an arm and a leg. There's gotta be somebody else who can figure out what the sound is. We're gonna do this as affordably as we can. Well, unfortunately, we kept running into issues with people who didn't want to deal with sprinters, who were happy to deal with sprinters and then realized we had one of the high roof ones, which of course they could not get into their bays. And then we had someone who finally took it and looked at it. They couldn't find anything wrong with it. So they told us we basically just had to keep driving until something failed, which we were not about to do. Finally, we took her to Mercedes. They were able to diagnose it pretty quickly. It turns out it had something to do with air conditioning. So we got our air conditioning, win-win, except for on our wallets.
we have been hunkering down with family for about the last week. Thank goodness for Stephen's family in Pennsylvania. We were going to go there anyway, but you know, they just really helped us out. One of his cousins loaned us his car for a few days so that we could go back and forth to the mechanics. We had all of our stuff emptied out in his sister's driveway. They just let us use the space to park up for the night, to work. We spent several nights there. The nights that Mercedes kept the van, his Aunt Lois opened up her guest room and her kitchen, and man, did we eat well. We ate very well. We are so grateful for just having a soft place to land and people taking care of us and just all the generosity with their resources while we were there. This is day 16 now of van life for us. I mean, it's only the second time we've been out in nature camping. We've spent a couple of nights in parking lots and then the rest of the time we've either been in the hotel in Washington DC or staying with our friends in Philadelphia. Hi Sorgies! Or spending the last week with family. So yeah, van life sucks. It's just been one project after another. It's been so much money and then more money and then more money. We're just finally getting started and I am already so freaking exhausted. But then you get a spot like this and a sunset view like this and you remember why you did it all. And now, we better get a few months of just this and not the problems or I'm gonna go insane. Pop open this bubbly. Let's do it. Leave no trace. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to van life. To our epic road trip adventure. We've been to New York before. You may recall our trip up the Hudson River on a vintage train. But now, we're in a different part of the state because we had to come to one of the biggest tourist attractions in the United States. Niagara Falls! Just like with any other tourist site, especially in the summer when all the families are out doing their summer vacations and things, arrive early. We got here in the morning, but not as early as we probably should have. The parking already at the visitor center was completely full. And parking anywhere nearby in town is like $20 for the day minimum. Uh, some places, if they charge you hourly, it's like $5 an hour. So it is not inexpensive. We managed to snag a free spot, but we've got a long walk to go. So plan ahead, get here early, or plan on getting some exercise. We thought that we were going to come here and go totally cheap. Just see what we could see from the viewpoints. We knew that would be pretty impressive as it was. But now that we see the boats down there and how close they're getting to the falls, and just that awesome perspective from the water level, I think we're going to break down and do it. Are you ready to get soaked? This is exciting. Oh yeah, thank you. trash bag we have the official attire oh he's still working on his <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. okay okay there we go there he is all right we are looking waterfall ready
Definitely worth the ticket price. Right? Yeah. And don't let the amount of people here and long lines fool you. They get through it really quickly, so you're not wasting your day trying to do this. But we're not done yet, because coming off the boat, you get to go up to what they call the crow's nest and get a really cool view of American Falls. Street now in Niagara Falls City and there are so many amazing international style food carts here. They've got Indian, Nepali, Middle Eastern, of course pizza and Italian. We've got fried chicken over there, a Hard Rock Cafe food truck. So many great food options here. We're gonna see if we can find something that we haven't tried before and give it a shot. Decision's been made. Steven is ordering us some Nepali Momo. We're gonna give that a try. Never had Nepali food before, so this should be good. Edgy Momo. Beautiful. Good bite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm. You got like that kind of grilled flavor from the grill. And then a little bit of sweetness, I think. Very subtle seasonings, but not too unlike curry. So just a touch of sweetness, really savory though. Great vegetables in here. This is delicious. The sauce that it comes with is very hot. Steven said it's like a tapatio. I don't know my hot sauces that well, so I'm gonna take his word for it. I think it doesn't even need it. It's got great flavor without it. So this is definitely a win. Go for the Momo. Here's a fun fact for you. The falls were formed because Lake Erie flows downhill to Lake Ontario. Out of nowhere, we got some really nasty clouds rolling in and the seagulls started going a little bit bonkers. There are now severe weather warnings in our app. So if the weather does clear up like they say it's going to, oh, here comes the rain. And we're gonna get back out there and we're gonna see Niagara Falls by night. I'm getting inside now, because this is getting a little wild. And just like that, the weather has broken and we have about an hour until the sun sets and that's when the falls get extra pretty. By the way, how cool is it that we have our house with us? <laughs> so we were able to wait out that storm in the comfort of our own home. We were, I was on the bed checking emails. We had snacks. We could go to the bathroom if we amazing. needed to. It was fantastic. It was so comfortable. I actually don't mind if we get rainstorms most of the places we go and it gives us a little bit of time to just kind of chill and unwind. I think naps in our future. <laughs> naps and snacks. Naps and snacks. Hard to believe this is the top of one of those massive waterfalls down there. It's so peaceful up here in Palm, and from the bottom, it's massive. again today to tap back into our friends and family tour. You might remember we did some Pittsburgh action a while back where we did a food tour and a bunch of other things around the city. This time we are strictly there to catch up with two of our closest friends. It's been 
been amazing visiting them. We've been spoiled once again by the mom of the house. Walter's mother, Mama T, has been cooking up a Filipino feast for us every evening we've been here. It's been amazing. We've tried foods we'd never tried before and it is so good. We also got to go on a river cruise this time, which we didn't get to do the last time we were here. So we enjoyed the sunset over the skyline of the city and got some uh, quality time in with Caitlin, Walter and their amazing daughter, Shiloh. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Steven. I'm Caitlin, I'm Shiloh. Say it loud. I'm Baptiste yeah. Chino, I'm Shiloh. <laughs> and we're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> who discovered cinematography while we were with her. And of course I had to come back for some Pamela's P&G pancakes. I have been dreaming about those things since the last time we were here. Man, that thing was just flapping up there. It easily could have flown off and hit another car behind us. It's kind of a miracle we got off the road without that happening. I can't believe this just happened. So we are driving down the freeway here in Pittsburgh, trying to run some errands, get some things done. And um, all of a sudden we hear this really loud noise in the back. We thought, oh God, something must have fallen. So I jump up, I'm looking around, trying to figure out what fell, nothing's, down, nothing's on the ground. I can't see what it is. And then all of a sudden, I spot it. Our skylight just ripped off the ceiling. I don't know if we didn't have it locked down properly or what. It was definitely closed. Um, but all of a sudden, it just flew off. It was barely holding on on one side, but the hinges are completely broken off. Like, there is no repairing this thing. I don't know what we're gonna do, because now we have a massive hole in our ceiling. We gotta figure out some way to cover it up. And then, are we gonna buy a new skylight to put in there? Ugh, this is such a nightmare. I really wanted this skylight and it has just been such a headache. Uh, we don't know how we're gonna fix this. I think it's gonna be a Gorilla Tape kind of day. thing to stay down and not leak water until we can probably go home to get it sorted. Van life sucks. All right, we got that thing taped down just in time for our appointment at Best Buy because the cable to our backup camera totally severed and we have to have that fixed now. So one of these days, the van life projects will end and the travel will just go on and on and on. But today is not that day. So, you know, a lot of people DIY build their own van, just like we did. And then they love it so much, they go into business DIY building other people's vans. Are those people freaking crazy or what? We are not those people. We are so not those people. I mean, full disclosure, a lot of our problems come from the fact that we really kind of rushed through the build. We just wanted to get it done and get on the road. But things like the air conditioning in our van and making that noise and everything, or this camera cable breaking the way it did, that's not on us. And that's not on our rush through the build. Those are things that would have happened anyway. So I'm only taking partial responsibility. I think that's fair. So yeah, there's some water running down back here. So it's just whatever that is, is running down here. After a miserable night of rain and leaks, we decided to officially call it. Yeah, we're going home. <laughs>